Hi, I'm Rick. Welcome to Elbow Shots. Today I'm going to be doing a plastic laminate countertop. Uh, just a small little galley kitchen in a one bedroom apartment, but you'll get the concepts. So let's take a look. Here's our kitchen project. We're going to do the little one on the right today. We'll begin by preparing our workspace. We want to make sure we get everything scraped and swept up real good. Any little chunks left on the floor when you're kneeling down on your materials could force their way up through the backing and create a star crack on the face of the material. Now we're ready to unroll our materials. Make sure you hold one hand on the roll to keep it from uncoiling on you while you cut the straps. Remove your packaging material. Unroll the material out onto the floor, pull it away from the wall, so give yourself some room to work, get the straps out, take the stickers off, and then I like to take and lay my straight edge down on the material, helps it lay flat so I can check my sizes, make sure I got all the right sizes. The factory sizes are usually an inch longer in each direction than the call size, so a call size of 4x8 actually gives you a 49 by 97. Okay, we're ready to prepare our countertop. This one, the self edge is pretty flat. Usually I use a belt sander to run over. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to just use the cutting edge of the file, the, the uh, corner, and just kind of scrape it down. I'll do this after I belt sand anyway just to make sure the edge is nice and flat. Um, pay particular attention to any areas where three pieces come together. Do the face of it. I'm just using this corner right here. There's another area where three pieces come together. And then make sure you get the ends really good. You can make your self edge whatever depth works best for your countertop. These are one inch. You can use a standard one by two. I like to use this half by inch and three eighths bull nose stop. Put the radius edge on the bottom up against the cabinet. You have three squared off edges. Gives it some nice depth. I like to set the slitter so that it doesn't cut all the way through in one pass. I make two passes. It's pretty quick and easy. In fact, I'll even cut an extra strip or two if I have enough material. You can also cut your self edge using the straight edge and the score all which you'll see me doing that a little bit later uh, but th using the slitter gives it a nice clean edge on both sides so now we're ready to start gluing our self edge I'm going to take and cut that hooked end off of there from the slitter and then I'm going to cut the self edge about a half inch long. And then I'll slide the cut end down to the wall. And then I'll cut off the other hooked end. So now we're going to fit our self edge to the wall. First I'm going to take and scratch the wall just lightly to get through the texture a little bit. So I have a nice pocket to fit into. You can see there's a little bit of a gap at the bottom. So I'm going to take a little bit off the top part of it with a file. File it down a little. Uh, and then deburr it. Those shears actually will put little crumbs on the edge of your cut. Still needs a little bit more. So just hit it again with the file. Now I take it and slide it into that pocket. We have a nice fit, we're ready to go. I use 3M Fast Bond. It's water soluble and it has a strong, reliable bond. 
and I use a six inch disposable roller, two inch foam brush, and a disposable paint tray. It's not the fastest method, but it works. I'm just going to pour a little bit into the tray. We're just doing self edge so we don't need very much and I have other cuts to make so I don't want it to skin over on me. And I'll pick up that piece of scrap that I cut off and use it as a shield to protect the wall. Brush on the adhesive. Now once I get away from the wall I can set the shield down. I still got some on the wall. Just clean it off right away. It's good to keep a damp cloth handy to wipe off any drips because it happens but if you get it right away it's, there's no problem and I'm brushing it on holding the brush upside down of course it drips when you do that so clean it off hold it the right way brush on there and then pay particular attention to the corners especially here I've got end grain so I want to give that a couple of extra coats corners are the most vulnerable uh, and apply an even coat onto the, the laminate itself and then we have to let it sit for 20 to 30 minutes they say up to 24 hours but I've never tested that so we'll come back in about 20 minutes now our adhesive is set up we're ready to put our piece in place I'm going to clean off any excess adhesive on the face of the laminate especially where it goes up against the wall that's really a bear to clean up. Now we have pressure sensitive adhesive that we're using so it really requires some pressure before you get a good bond. So we're going to go ahead and put it back in place and then roll it really well with the steel roller and now we have a good bond. Now to nip off the ends, I use these ceramic tile nippers that I got at a pawn shop back in 1984 and then filed the stops out so that the cutters would close down all the way. And we take our file and file it down flush. And then I like to hit the top corner so that when I bring my router over, it doesn't catch and chip it. Do looks like we have a problem here in my haste I forgot to file the end of this off one of my favorite models is it'll never get easier to fix than now so I'm going to take that scrap and prop it out and then file off what I should have filed off in the beginning get it down flush it's just one little rib at the back side of that piece of plywood that was sticking out a touch just enough that I didn't get a good bond on my corner there. I'll respread it and come back later. Okay, we can take out our scrap, press it back in place, and then roll it. This steel roller that I'm using is just a seam roller for sheet vinyl, but it works really well for laminate too. Then we take our file and dress up the end and we're back in action ready to go. So now we're going to uh, glue the front self edge on. I've already fitted it to the wall. Start spreading adhesive. Our corners are our most vulnerable part of the countertop so we want to make sure we get a good spread of adhesive on there because they're the most likely to get bumped and the ends possibly knocked off. Make sure you get a good even spread of adhesive on there and if you happen to get a build up anywhere like along that top edge just take it brush it off. You want to make sure it's nice and even. The wood self edge on this front piece doesn't go all the way to the wall. There's a little bit of a gap there so I didn't really need a shield for it. Now that our piece is dry, we check it by hand, make sure no, we get no transfer. Clean off the end, because we want to make sure there's no excess glue up against the wall there. It's a lot easier to clean off ahead of time. I'm working from one end to the other, we put the self edge on flush to the bottom edge, leaving a little bit of an overhang on the top. 
roll it really well nip it off now when we file it we're filing against the face so we want to angle the file out a little bit and take it slowly check it by hand and give it a little finish polish on there the underneath side is a sharp edge remember this is a working area so we don't want anybody cutting themselves on it so I just hit it with the flat side of the file first and then the outside corner to, just to smooth it off a little bit and now I'd like to introduce you to an old friend of mine the Makita offset router I don't even think they make them anymore, but it's designed to get into tight spaces. It'll get within three quarters of an inch of the wall there. It's nice and lightweight. They make laminate routers now that are lightweight and easy to handle. I have one of those I sometimes use for this. But this, like I said, is an old friend of mine. I've had it since the mid 80s. Still working use my hand as a shield because it really throws off chips make a lot of noise and a lot of mess and I just nip off the ends there and now when you're filing just keep the file flat on the deck and with an inward motion almost an inward and a draw stroke a draw stroke is just a sideways motion where you hold the file perpendicular and push it down the length of the edge. So when you come into the corner you want to change the angle of your file because you're going to be filing both of those pieces at the same time. You just take it down up in the corners uh, you get that little bit of area where you nipped it off it's not quite as flat as the routed area. My router bit was a little bit on the dull side so it left kind of a fuzzy edge I'm just going to clean it up by lightly filing that off with an upward stroke. That's better. Now we get it all swept off. Make sure we get every bit of it off. Sweep it and then dust it. Now we're going to measure our decks. We want to leave a half inch overhang on the front and on the end. So this is 66 and 5 eighths. We'll mark 67 and an eighth. But the wall actually angles out a little bit over there. It's going to need a little more on the, at the front edge. So we'll go 67 and a quarter. And then we'll measure our depth. Looks like we got about 25 inches in all three spots so we'll go 25 and a half that's a standard depth and then we're gonna go and measure our backsplash at the same time it looks like the old one was at five inches okay from our 36 inch piece we need a 25 and a half inch deck and a five inch backsplash so we have a little bit of extra here I'm gonna go ahead and trim the factory edge off with the slitter so it'll give us a nice clean edge to start with. I'm just going to cut this one with a single pass. It still snaps off fairly easily. Now we're going to cut our backsplash using the carbide tip scoring tool on the straight edge. We measure five inches at one end of the straight edge, hold that end, and then measure five inches at the other end, and then double check to make sure that we didn't slip. Using our carbide tip scoring tool will make several passes hold your scoring tool tight up against the edge of the straight edge so I'm going to put a mark at 67 and a quarter for the length of our deck and backsplash and that leaves us with five and three quarters so I'm going to take the laminate slitter and set it for three quarters of an inch and trim that off Once we get that three quarters of an inch trimmed off, 
our next cut will actually cut our backsplash and our deck to length and also will give us the height on our end splash. So again we'll set our straight edge down measure over five inches on the end that's closest to us hold that and adjust the other end that one was perfect we put our weight on there and make three or four passes this is a well broken in scoring tool if you have a brand new one it can tend to want to walk on you and by that I mean it can jump off track and come away from your straight edge and scratch your scratch the face of your laminate. So we need a five inch backsplash and a twenty five and a half inch deck. We're gonna make our cut at thirty and a half. Line it up on this end, adjust the other end, put my knee on it for weight to hold it in place, and then score it. Practice on a scrap if you can. Okay, we're at 67 and a quarter. We have all of our score cuts made. And now we just put pressure on the cut and lift the edge and it snaps right off. All right, get the end started. Work your way down the length of the cut. This is just a scrap piece over here. And then you can run your finger down. Oop, not enough weight some weight on there you can run your finger down that cut while holding up that side and it comes right off of there now it's time to fit the deck so we're gonna bring our piece in slide it on over up against the wall you can see we've got a bit of a gap along that end there and there's also a little bit of a gap along the back wall over here so I'm going to use an ultra-fine Sharpie and just place it up against the wall and run it down. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, here we've got a bit of a heavy texture. And then we also have a couple of mountains there. You know, maybe they're not mountains. They're just molehills, but... Anyway, I, what I'll do, because I have kind of a fuzzy line with that heavy texture, is I'll just average out the line and just cut it off straight with my shears. And then I'll do a magic cut that you can't see. You can see it in the shadow, I guess. Just follow the line. Cut away what isn't the angel. That's a pretty good fit there if I was just, if I'm using a backsplash. I'm going to take a pencil and our backsplash piece and mark it just behind the top edge. And then I'll bend it, you know, pull the back corner out, bend it, and pull that back and mark the front edge. That way I know what the perimeter of my backsplash is there's a little bit of a gap here that I should fix now but I made a bad judgment that it'll be all right I'll pay for that later you can see that in the backsplash video I take my four inch razor blade scraper and scrape down those mountains they are mountains in the scale of laminate which is less than a sixteenth of an inch I'll get all that heavy texture scraped off I want to do the same thing with the back wall as well This is a nice tight fit for any situation where you're going to be using a backsplash. But if you wanted to uh, have a tighter fit, like your no backsplash, maybe you're putting it up against a cabinet, you can take a pencil and you get a nice fine line that you can cut with the shears. This is not the best position to be cutting from, but I was just showing it for the camera. Uh, maybe showing off a little but anyway this here is a better grip and position for using these shears just like scissors or any other pair of shears and file it off there you go nice tight fit 
Then we'll hit the back wall is the same way. Just lay the pencil flat, run it down along the wall. I'll follow the contours of the wall. And this is a small cabinet, so I'm just going to flip the deck piece around and attack this from a more comfortable angle. It's a lot easier to cut this way. Now these shears leave a sharp jagged edge so I'm gonna clean that up with a file uh, makes it safer knocks off any loose crumbs that might be hanging on there and also the uh, rounded edge is less susceptible to damage if you should bump it against something while you're handling it now we want to mark our deck piece for orientation so you can trace the outline of the countertop or you can just put an F on the front okay so we're ready to start spreading our adhesive we don't need to have it real heavy we don't want to have it too light either we just want to make sure it's even so I was, I'm going to roll it in both directions because with the new roller it was getting some skips going on there. And then when we're doing the subtops, I use the end of the roller to get up against the wall. Um, make sure you get a good coat on the uh, self edge, the wood self edge because we have end grain exposed there. Now I have a little spot up at the front of the backsplash that I couldn't quite get to with the roller, so I'll just touch it up with the brush. So I have a nice even coat. I'm going to set that aside and let it dry. Finish spreading the top. It's all important, but the, the outside edges are particularly important. Well, we're using contact adhesive here so that means once it's dry and the pieces come in contact with each other they will stick so i use these two inch aluminum venetian blind slats to give me separation until i can get the sheet in place and then pull them out one at a time i know i said that or i showed you on that the self edge would come apart with it without it having been rolled but we have a larger surface area and also uh, we got gravity with our adhesive dry I like to brush my hand over there and make sure there aren't, isn't any debris no cling ohms we have our orientation line on the front there and we also as the other option have an F marked on the front edge slide it in place or have it where I want if I don't have any end walls I'll just start in the middle and work my way out to the ends but with an end wall, I, I like to set that, make sure that it's down, not hanging on the wall, and then work from the other end, pulling them out one or two at a time, and just keep brooming it down. If you have tension on that wall, you don't want to broom it towards the wall, you want to broom it out towards the end. But if, you, if you'd like to get it a little closer, you can broom it towards there. And then we roll it. Hit the field first and then come back through and get the self edge and I like to roll the self edge pretty hard but be careful when you get to the end you don't want to chip that end you can break that off there I use a half inch roller bearing and then I spray a little WD-40 in there to keep it from getting gunked up from the adhesive and the dust and then I set the depth of my bit so that the cutters are just right at the thickness of the laminate. You start the router up, you want to do it away from the wall because that spinning is going to throw off some WD-40. So I make a single pass and then I'll take my handy dandy scrap and scrape it down, get the clumps off of there and then make another pass and that makes it a lot easier to file. There are a couple of ways to deal with that last little tab that the router leaves behind. I use my offset router, cut it to within three quarters of an inch, and then I use my ceramic tile nippers with the stops filed out, clip it off, 
and then hit it with a file. That's one method. Now the other way to do it is to take a utility knife and make a couple of passes, score it, score the backing on it pretty good. I didn't get it quite right the first couple of passes, so I'm just going to go over it a couple because I want to make sure that it's it's got a good cut there. And once I get that, I take both thumbs and just snap it down. It comes off pretty clean. And then hit it with a file. And when you're filing, take your time with it. You're almost done here. Keep your file angled away from the face of your self edge. And then I give it a nice draw stroke to smooth that out. And then I angle the file like that to break the edge so it's rounded a little bit. We come around to the front, keep downward to draw stroke. You want to just file until you see that glue line disappear. Once that starts to disappear, you're done there. Move on. Finish filing and then round your corner off and then round off the front edge. Sweep and or vacuum. Get everything cleaned up. Use a solvent to remove any excess adhesive. And that's it. We're done. Now I've given you a lot of information in a short period of time. Please watch this video as many times as it takes for you to feel confident with your project. Alright, thank you for watching. If you found value in this video, please help me out by pushing my buttons. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the notifications so you can see future Elbow Shots videos like the ones I've done on backsplashes and making seams.